Hey everyone, welcome. What you see before you are three amazing examples of Sotol from La Higuera. A lot of you know tequila, most of you know mezcal. Anyone who doesn't know what Sotol is has got to get on board. While I was working my way through the samples, the bounty of samples that I had from sales reps during the lockdown, um, I happened across an entire bag of samples from Eric Torin of Fidencio Spirits full of his Ricias and his Mezcals and these three Sotols and all three of these blew me away. And so I sent him an email and I said, why don't we do a chat about them on Zoom and we'll record it and we'll make a video for it and I'll offer them out. And that's what's going on here. So this is just the short intro. Um, you really got to try these. They're unbelievable. I don't know that there is a beverage on the market that offers this much character for so little money. If you want the short version, just read below. There's all the info you need. But if you really want to learn a little bit more about these, please just follow along. So with that, here's me and Eric discussing some Soto. All right. Hi, everyone. It's Matt Franco, uh, MCF Rare Wine. Today, I am very excited to be joined by uh, Eric Torin from Fidencio uh, Spirits. He imports uh, tequila, tequila or just mezcal and just mezcal, right? A EBT, everything but tequila. Right? Uh -huh, right. um, Mexican spirits, traditional Mexican spirits. I started with mezcal. We're talking about Sotal today and Ricea and Bacanora. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe someday a tequila, I hope so. You know, it has to uh, be the right thing. Yeah, so far, I think uh, once I, I speaking for myself here, but and I have nothing against tequila, but once you kind of dive into these, it's like again, I'm probably going to get myself in trouble with some people, but it's like those days when you were really into American whiskey and then you kind of jump into single malts and things like that, and you just it kind of just goes away, but anyway, all of that aside, if you, I, I, if you think of it that way, then you know, it's just just kind of like there are those select few american whiskeys that i, I still love to drink that sure. still offer it For you sure. know and yeah. that and that's a good way of thinking about tequila you know it's a very it is such an important part of the agave dialogue and obviously in terms of sales but it is fairly narrow in the whole spectrum of things so yeah. pick and choose the really awesome ones which i'm sure you do yeah for sure um so Today we're talking about uh, three so tall, and so tall is something that I've only really become aware of in the last few years. Um, and even, you know, within that time period, I, I wouldn't say that I've had uh, too much experience with it. Um, but just to give everyone a little bit of background here, uh, Eric had sent me some samples, and I was kind of working through them during our whole lovely COVID period here, and I was just blown away by the three uh, so tall from this producer, La Higuera. Um, so everyone knows, we just mentioned tequila, there's mezcal, there's ricea, and what you're dealing with there is the agave plant. Um, so tall is made from a completely different plant. The key way to think about it is that uh, like an agave plant, it is a succulent. Mm -hmm. And um, like spirits made from agave, you're harvesting for the piña, the core, in mm -hmm. the north, they often refer, in the north of Mexico, it's often referred to as the cabeza, the mm -hmm. head, but we most commonly know it in the U.S. as the piña. And so tall bodies of the plants, when harvested, are also referred to a piña. Um, and in the reason why is that's where all the content of different various carbohydrates are. Mm -hmm. So carbohydrates are sugars, as you, you heat them to break them down to simple sugars, so then we can get uh, fermentation. Um, so in that way, they're really analogous. Uh, they're, not, they're, they're not the same, but they are processed in the same way. And also processed in the same way in that you have very, very ancestral style production where our pit roasting and wild fermentation. And then you have um, sotals that are made like more modern processes that are more controlled Mm -hmm. um, with uh, steam ovens that are neutral cooking. So you kind of see that all happen, um, all different um, 
aspects of the production kind of in practice. Um, La Higuera is made from uh, Gerardo Ruela, he's a very traditional producer. Um, mm -hmm. He's a fifth generation maker uh, in Chihuahua. So, so tall as the spirit, uh, as a category, is named after the source material, the so tall plant. Cool. There are about 20 different types of sotals or species of sotal plants. And we're going to try three of them today, uh, Wheelery, Leophyllum, and Sedrosanum. And um, the place where Gerardo is from, like his grandparents and, gr and great-grandparents and that village, that's in Leophyllum country. But his distillery now is closer to the city because he found a property about almost an hour away, a little less than an hour away from the city, where there's an underwater spring and a river and shade, and he has this amazing oasis for mm -hmm. production. Uh, and um, and the, pro the concept of the project, La Higuera, which means the fig, because there are fig trees on the property, mm -hmm. um, is, uh, is really to explore from the lens, from the hand of one maker, flavors of the different species of the Sotal plant. So um, it gives us an opportunity to see some of the diversity and some of the differences um, all happening at the same distillery. Um, yeah, the, uh, the process, he's using um, a four ton underground pit oven that uh, He's roasting with Encino, which is black oak, which mm -hmm. throughout Mezcal and Sotal is a very common choice of quality wood for cooking. Mm -hmm. So just like with Mezcal, if you're thinking about um, a part of what influences the flavor, the equipment, the maker, the traditions, the, the, the plant itself, the terroir, the wood that you use for roasting will also matter. And there are different types of quality woods and mm -hmm. other ones that, you, that aren't so nice. So all that is the same through all these expressions. Right. So what we're going to see the difference is, is, the, is the varietal, I'm, is the species. Uh, I'm just really excited to uh, hear you describe uh, each all one right. as we go through, because I was so taken by um, the, uh, the flavors. So let's do it. I think, I think in general, if we're going to be very general about um, my impression of Sotals and the various Sotals that I've had, they all kind of, in comparison to agave spirits, land in a more earthy and vegetal place. Totally. And of course, there are exceptions, you know, so mm -hmm. there are very earthy and vegetal mezcals and some fruitier sotals. But I think just as a generalization, if you're going into it, you kind of want to expect that. Um, and it's, if you like it, look for it. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that I have is the wheelery. The wheelery... Mm -hmm. um, is so for this brand everything is made the same way and this is what's going on here but we charge less money for wheelery and the only reason why is because where the distillery is located okay. the plants are um the, the the wild forage plants that are closest to the distillery um are in greatest abundance is the wheelery you have to travel further for the other varietals so that's the only reason why it's a different in price um, but it's also the most commonly used um, species for making so tall, and okay. you find them in other states as well. Um, what's really interesting for me about this is right off the nose, like before you even taste it, because I get like this sugar cookie kind of bready, neutral mm -hmm. yeastiness. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you taste it, it goes into that pretty cool, uh, earthy vegetal profile. Mm -hmm. Um, wow, that does just really, you're right, explode on the palate. I mean, you get all that good smoky earth. Does mm -hmm. it, yeah, and, and you know, and then once it hits the palate, then those elements start to come out in the nose. Yeah, I can see the vegetal thing. And there's just a, a, a there's a, this bright berry fruit at the end that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, doesn't, uh, you know, it's not a fruitiness. It's just, it's a, such a, wonderful balance to all those edgier flavors and aromas yeah that's gorgeous wow um, yeah let's yeah. go into the leophyllum all right let's do it um I mean, that's um it's right out of the 
first whiff. I mean, a completely different beverage in a lot of ways. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 for me, this one sort of affected how I um, view myself because this one threw me for a loop when I first tried it many years ago. So on the nose, it's just this really beautiful, relatable, mm -hmm. mineral kind of nose that for me, it reminds me of being in nursery school and that smell of the paste that you are not supposed to eat, that you <laughs> ate yeah. as a little kid. It's uh -huh. really like clean, wet, mineral, almost flinty kind of nose. Uh -huh. And um, But then when you taste it, it's yeah. wow. just totally not like any so tall I've ever had. It's really unctuous. It's really oily. Mm -hmm. It gives me a, a sense of having like salami meatiness and it doesn't taste very mineral to me. Mm -hmm. um, and like the rest of them, but I think in the case of, in this one, it has, they, I think they all have beautiful texture. For me, these are really well made and texture is the, how one of like the primary judges for the the, the skill of the producer mm. and this texture is just incredible um and when i say it sort of changed how i look at my my role in these things uh -huh. as an importer is that i went into it being like oh i have an, a, an, a little bit of experience and an expectation of so tall mm -hmm. and then when i first tried this it was like this is nothing like i know and and this doesn't make any sense. And, and I'm like, wait, this is made by a traditional producer in the natural way, made from a plant in a place. Who am I to have an expectation? This is what it tastes right. like. Right. And I kind of like sort of recalibrated how I think about things. And I love it. I love drinking it. I love um, sharing it and seeing people's reaction. It's really fun. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just so much character comes through in these. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, and it really is. I mean, the difference here on the nose and the palate is really just. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you could get a good sense of what it tastes like with on the nose, mm -hmm. but in so many of these types of spirits, um, they're just going to be uh, really different. Yeah, and I find that with agave spirits too. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's almost yeah. like it's too. I mean, you're you're get to enjoy two completely separate elements, and I suppose you could say the yeah. same thing about most of the beverages where you are, you know, enjoying the aromas as well. But to me, this is very distinct. Um, and that's just and, and this one happens to be, I think, the furthest apart. So even within yeah. it's in this trio, mm -hmm. the, the nose and the palate is like totally. Uh, unexpected yeah the, the the nice thing about the this is that it's nothing but the raw character you know you're not yeah. harmonizing it and one of the interesting <laughs> things that um the technical side of what's interesting about agave spirits and and so tall and, and so tall spirits um and why they are so profound as a clear spirit and mm -hmm. that's really different for um it, to achieve it's really difficult and and not really common to achieve like this kind of complexity with mm -hmm. other grain or fruit spirits although there are great odor views that are drank clear mm -hmm. but um in all plants they have these um chemical components called saponins and terpenes right mm -hmm. and with these are um you know everybody's seen an agave plant maybe you haven't seen a so tall plant but basically think of it that these guys are holding the water and the sugars in a very hostile environment. So every, all the nature wants to get at it, right? So mm -hmm. they develop these needles and spines and um, waxes on the outside of the plant to prevent um, animals, mammals, bigger animals from getting at it. But that's not going to work against insects, right? Or beetles. Mm -hmm. like that. So they have other defense mechanisms that are chemical defenses, chemical mm -hmm. warfare. Um, so what in the world, all plants have it, wheat, barley, uh, grapes, um, have saponins and terpenes, but in the plant world, agave and sotal, they're really at the higher, higher levels. And then within them, there is various degrees. So some have way more and 
uh, you could experience that as like the ones at the high end of that. You can't, even the, the locals who have been working with them their whole lives, they will always wear long sleeve shirts and gloves to protect them from being caught because they are caustic to our skin. Mm -hmm. What happens though, is when you cook that and then ferment it and then distill it, that we experience that as points of flavor and complexity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. something that's interesting. So you have all this, op because there's so much of that um, and this type of production taking it through, we have all this um, great experiences without needing a barrel to have it. Now there's nothing wrong with the barrel and you might love a barrel on top of it, but they have a lot to offer without it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's part, cool. of, part of why, yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of all of those points of interest, let's talk about the Cedrasanum, is that what we call it? Yes. Cedrosanum, uh, mm -hmm. this, these colony of plants, they kind of live in colonies because they are so prolific with seeds that they don't, they just, they aren't, this is the area for this, the area for that. Mm -hmm. So Cedrosanum is closest to the state of Coahuila, Coahuila which is also in the Dio for Sotal. Mm -hmm. uh, so further south and further east. Um, and charred grass i think it's the most complex on the palette of all of them mm -hmm. it really kind of gives you that um fourth fifth sixth sip where you're kind of like feeling different feelings and influences as yeah. you're acclimating to it and it really takes you far and it helps a long finish but it also in some ways is kind of has the a lot of, if you've had so tall, maybe the most of the expected flavor because mm -hmm. it is really grassy and really vegetal. And if you're thinking of that, if you know so tall, this might be the least surprising to you, um, but it is the most complex for me. I yeah. really like it. Definitely the most complete yeah. flavor. I mean, from top to bottom, yeah. there's lots of weight all the way through. It's got really nice texture. It's got the smokiness. It's got that, that you know, pungent clay pot earthiness mm. type thing going on i think it's the smoke of yeah. the three brian yeah yeah yep. for sure there's a um, ton going on there yeah definitely smoky i mean and then you still have that 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 that, that really lovely just subtle fruit just kind yeah. of you know ties it all together boy that's beautiful yeah um so uh we have the three we just mentioned here, um, mm -hmm. and it's going to be for everyone who's going to be seeing this video. There will be an accompanying offer for each one of these, so that they can try them for themselves. Mm -hmm. Ideally, everyone buys a bottle of each. We'll have a, a three-pack um, option, <laughs> and uh, that way you can really like experience everything. But just for you know the viewers out there, um, Eric mentioned before we started uh, you know the video that he was going to have a really super special kind of one-off. Yes. Um, so quickly, if you want to go through that, um, we can kind of wet everyone's palate in anticipation for that. Totally. And we'll make sure that um, you are getting allocation on that when it does arrive. So um, bought a batch of this very rare Oaxacan Sotal. We call, they don't call it Sotal. They call it Cucharilla. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to put Sotal on the label because we would want to respect the DO. So it gives, we're just calling it La Higuera Cucharilla. It's made from a species that doesn't exist in the north. It's called Lucidium rosé. So we added pink um, as kind of the, the, the design inspiration because of the name of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, the piñas are really long. Like when you were talking about that long type of piña, Lucidium <laughs> rosé does that. Um, so they have a different look to them. And if this is, we have 33 12 bottle cases coming into the, that's it, that's the batch. Wow. Yeah. Um, I can tell you right now that Esteban, the owner of the brand in Mexico is keeping a case. I'm keeping a case. So there's gonna be 31 cases coming <laughs> to the market. And um, they're 12 pack cases. So they're, they're, you know, they're not the little guys like we normally do. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be able to get more. And if not, we'll just have fun with it and enjoy it. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this was really awesome. Thanks for taking the time, despite my uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you um, for and just me the time. you know, just um, you know, really quickly, just to keep everyone engaged for the future. Um, 
you know, I've also been working my way through the the mezcals in uh, in, mm-hmm. in Eric's book, and also he's got some Vicias that are gorgeous too. So perhaps yeah. we can get together and do another one about uh, a different producer, some of those producers I'm, as well. Anytime, I'd love to love to do that. And um, <laughs> there's a lot to know, a lot of information. It could be heavy and challenging because we get geeky on our side of things. Well, that's right. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, right on. Well, you know, it's uh, it's just about 11 a.m. here, and I need to step away from the so-called. <laughs> I can uh, just wait to go to the work. The rest of the morning doing right it. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate it, man. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully got everybody excited here. Cool, 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 cool. All, All right. the best. Cool. Talk to you soon.